Hey everyone, like I mentioned in our last video, there have been a ton of China competitions happening this December. Um, in the finals of the Asia Open Signature event, um, we did hit 423 points and this was the winning score. And that is a brand new world record and it's only 11 points away from the max score of 434. So we're getting really, really close to perfect runs. And on top of that, there are a lot of noticeable changes on these robots coming from the best organizations in the world right now, YouthLink and Stemstar. So with that, let's jump right into the match. So here we can see that the red team here um, goes for that 91 point stack on the bottom beam, uh, doing that bottom stack first and then focusing on the beam. And blue team here um, is focusing on that 121 point uh, cactus, cactus, why cactus standoff stack there. Um, and so red team is done with their 91 stack and blue team is also done with their 121 point stack. And mind you, this is only about 22 seconds into the match. So it's really, really fast um, speeds. And now they're just focusing on those normal stacks in the matching gold bonuses. You can see really fast um, is that three gold, uh, three colored stack. And they're also doing some starting pins off. They do end up getting three out of the four off. Um, and now both teams are just maximizing their three colored sacks. And so here uh, they have basically all full goals. Um, and they're just doing the last one. And they do use that strategy of going perpendicular to the loading station, dropping those uh, into the corner goal. And that is the match. So one trend we do see here is that these square corner goals are not used and most likely will not be used in any of these high scoring matches because the triangle goal is just so much more convenient for the loading zone because they're the same color and um, all the stacks fit into the corner and triangle goal without needing this. So I'm curious to see if the RECF will change any of the rules for the corner goal to incentivize these. All right, now for the important part of the video, what are these China drivers doing do so well? This is a very driver-focused game, mix and match, and a strong driver can carry a team through high-pressure moments like finals, and that's how you actually get high scores. Um, I've seen a bunch of teams just completely sell in finals, especially in the U.S. Um, in those signature events. One of the biggest reasons um, top teams score high is simple. They save time, and a huge part of that comes down to how they handle turning. So turning is one of the most inefficient movements because for a moment, the robot isn't doing anything else. Um, a lot of teams overshoot their turns and they have to correct, they have to turn back, try again, and they waste about like one to two seconds every single time. And over a full run, that lost time really adds up. So the best teams design their routes to use what we call combo turns. So if we can look over here, um, when the red team finishes uh, clamping the beam, they turn towards the loading station because that's their next stop while stacking those pins on the beam. So this way, you can combine two actions into one. When you're flipping the 180 mech, you can't really do anything else like other than clamping the beam. So turning is the best option here. This way, they can combine two in one and save half the time. And as you can see here, they save a lot of time. And one thing that I see a lot of teams do is they wait for those stacks to come over and then they start turning instead of doing it at the same time. Because for some reason, the drivers are worried that it might not go on or something. But you know, you just have to tune your bot. You have to be confident in your robot. and this way you can save a lot of time so you can see here they have to get these pins and then turn like that and that is a curve and so when the turning angle is shallow so like five to ten degrees you can curve so that's turning while moving and that saves a lot of time um rather than like just going in a straight line and then having to turn every single time you want to go somewhere Driver practice is also a big part, uh, and the best way is just to make a route on a digital copy of the field and keep on practicing it over and over and over again. And you can ask the non-drivers of your team, like the loaders, to look out for places to speed up and improve, or you can also ask in our Discord server in the description. All right, now that you know the importance of consistency in driving, let's hop into the new concepts on the YouthLink robot. So the Captopins just hosted a rookie competition in California, and one of the biggest mistakes I see every single time is that some teams, even the top teams, they slightly miss the beam drop and have the entire stack like this fall over. And yes, you can restack the beam, but your pins, these six pins, are already completely gone. You can't restore them anymore because they're knocked over. While better driver practice can help with this, YouthLink and Stemstar as well added an aligner in the back um, that flips out to assist the drivers. This gives you a much clearer reference for the distance and the positioning when you're far away from that bottom stack of the 91. Um, but the main purpose is to guide the bottom stack of the 91 um, into the perfect position side to side, forward and backwards, for your lift to just drop that beam on perfectly. And it's 
a flip out aligner similar to what team 3722U has, but instead of being angled and coming out like that, it is linear. So it just folds out like that. And it's basically just two sticks when it's out. Um, it is powered by two pistons, and when it's in its retracted state like this over here, um, it doubles as a small 110-point aligner or 121-point aligner on this for this standoff goal. And although it seems like it won't do much, this gap in the middle is actually super helpful, and you can completely align even if you're like completely off. Next up, how do they do the 121-point stack on the standoff goal? We haven't really been seeing these 121-point stacks because um, they are just harder to do uh, with a 180 mech robot. We've been seeing a lot of 110-point stacks, but to get higher scores, 121 is really important. And a lot of the 180 mechs we've seen so far cap out at this 110-point cactus stack, so just a one pin. Um, some teams, like Ghost Bots, change their connection point um, well, others just made the lift longer so that it can go higher. But the problem is doing either is that it can cause issues. So first of all, you risk hitting the bottom stack of the cactus. As you can see here, the beam is basically edging the pin and the pin might be bent, you'll waste time or like you might just get stuck completely, uh, which is really bad. And if you just extend the lift, you'll be adding weight and you might actually have your 180 Mac collide with your lift because it's longer. So YouthLink has used a pretty, pretty rare type of lift, which is called a six bar. So imagine a four bar lift, like a normal four bar lift, then attach another four bar lift to its end to create a six bar system, effectively doubling the lift stages. As the first four bar, this portion over here, lifts up, the second four bar um, also lifts up and including its connection points. So this connection point over here of the second four bar, it used to be around over here. But now because this four bar lifted this two bar beam up, the connection point is now way higher. So this allows the entire lift to reach very high to the 121 point cactus standoff height and possibly even higher while still being very light and compact. And another um, pro for this is that it's stronger and you can make it lighter. So a lot of the four bar lifts we've seen all use a two by 20 and a one by 20. But as you can see here, this is all one by 20s. And the reason for that is because when you have three bars like this per each side, you have a lot more strength. There's a lot of triangular bracing force over here, so nothing can really snap. And also this connection bar is really like shorter than normal. Um, and so it just stops bending or snapping and all of that. The clamp is also different from what we have seen on like XG or Magic Kids robots. Um, instead of a T clamp, they use this kind of L clamp with this four five four offset angle beam. Uh, and a lot of their newer robots do use two pistons instead of one. And the reason for this is because two pistons, although it's a bit heavier and uses a bit more air, it's way faster, it's way more powerful. Um, you will have your beam like swishing around and it's also much easier to tune to work reliably. Next part is a very, very small detail and definitely not required. Um, but it's this tiny little one by one piece right over here on the bottom of the aligners. So a lot of teams drive straight towards the triangle goal and they rely on their aligners to rotate their robot at a, to a 45 degree angle to be able to score in the triangle goal. And the issue is that the beams on the triangle goal structure are very, very low. And that one by one piece is sitting at just the right level uh, to touch this while going in. So this part of the aligner, they slot into this gap over here of the triangle goal to avoid hitting or snapping or any of that. And so when you start turning, all of the stress is on this one by beam and uh, like sometimes it might bend or and also it aligns slower and you might get stuck and basically this one by beam it just touches this two by three beam right over here and it aligns faster and takes off a lot of the stress anyways guys that's going to be all for today the crazy crazy match out of china if you like this video please subscribe and like um and the second national competition so we've gone through one of three so far um, is actually happening right now as this video is uploaded. So I'm expecting to see even higher scores, uh, possibly even the max score of 434 points. So make sure to stay tuned and see you next time.